Today's Hootie Coco Super Bowl special brought to you by Fudgies. These things are great. Put some lead in your gut. It's the candy bar so good you won't ask what it's made of. Now, on with the show. Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. I've already reviewed the first Bazooka action figure. The second version of Bazooka was released in 1988 as part of Tiger Force. Tiger Force was Hasbro's clever way of getting kids to buy toys they already had. Bazooka is a football-themed action figure, so I'm going to review Tiger Force Bazooka on the day that part of a continent celebrates that specific region's favorite sport. There's a new 6-inch Tiger Force Bazooka action figure, and we'll look at that one too. Since some people only tune into the big game for the commercials, I'll have a special commercial break for you. HCC 788 presents Tiger Force Bazooka. This is Bazooka, the Tiger Force Missile Specialist from 1988. This figure was introduced in 1988 and was also available in 1989. It was discontinued for 1990. This is the second version of Bazooka. This figure features no new parts or accessories. There are three vintage versions of Bazooka, version 1 from 1985, version 2, the Tiger Force version from 1988, and version 3 from Battle Corps in 1988. 1993. Version 2 is entirely copied and recolored from version 1. Version 3 is the only one with a different sculpt and uniform. It is a rather drastic change. As the missile specialist, he was the successor to Zap, G.I. Joe's first bazooka soldier from 1982. The term bazooka is outdated. The bazooka was a World War II era anti-tank recoilless rifle. The name bazooka came from an instrument played by comedian Bob Burns in the 1930s and 40s. Soldiers of the era would have been familiar with Bob Burns. That's how the word became slang for the weapon that kind of looked like the bazooka. Larry Hama, the writer of the G.I. Joe comic book series and the file cards, objected to the term bazooka because it was outdated and obsolete. Alternate code names included Long Shot, Rough Tackle, Heat Man, Armor Harmor, and Hardline. If those are the alternatives, I'm glad they went with Bazooka. Tiger Force was a sub-team within G.I. Joe introduced in 1988. It consisted entirely of reissued action figures in different colors and one new character. The only new character, Sky Striker, was entirely made of reused parts. Nothing in Tiger Force was original. Tiger Force had vehicles, too. There were five Tiger Force vehicles in 1988 and two more in 1989. There were no new Tiger Force figures in 1989. Tiger Force got its name from the NATO Tiger Association. The NATO Tigers is an organization of NATO Air Forces. They conduct annual Tiger meets, at which airplanes and helicopters are painted with Tiger images and patterns. There was another historical reference for Tiger Force, a long-range reconnaissance patrol team from the 101st Airborne in Vietnam was nicknamed Tiger Force. The team became notorious for many war crimes committed against civilians in that war. Although it is awkward to have a G.I. Joe sub-team called Tiger Force, I don't believe the creators had any idea that it would be a problematic reference. The crimes of Tiger Force mostly came to public light in the early 2000s and would not have been known to the creative team at Hasbro in 1988. The first bazooka figure from 1985 was designed by Ron Rudat for Hasbro. Ron included the number 14 jersey for the New England Patriots quarterback Steve Grogan. Bazooka Bazooka wore the traditional red Patriots home jersey, even though the character wasn't from New England. He was from Minnesota, so he probably would have been a Vikings fan. Ron Rudat was and is a Patriots fan, though. Hasbro headquarters is located in Rhode Island, so the jersey is a nod to a hometown hero. Early concepts for Bazooka had him looking more like a traditional soldier, but the designer just had to include a reference to a favorite player. Bazooka version 2 changes the color 
colors from red with blue numbers outlined in white to white with orange numbers outlined in green. These colors relate to no professional football team as far as I know. The original colors had a special meaning, but the Tiger Force figure was not given as much thought and care. Let's take a look at Bazooka's accessories, starting with his weapon. The card contents call this an MAT Missile Launcher. The card doesn't say what MAT stands for, but it is probably Missile Anti-Tank. The missile launcher is in black plastic, just like the version 1 missile launcher. In fact, these may be the same accessory. If there's a difference between the two, I can't see it. If there's any difference at all, it is quite subtle. It is undersized for the main weapon for G.I. Joe's Missile Specialist. It has a grip here on the front, and that grip is a little bit too big to fit in my figure's hand. It also has this strap, and you can hang the weapon by the strap over the figure's shoulder, and that also works. This is roughly the same size and design as the real-world M72 Law rocket launcher, but this seems to have the projectile poking out the front. In 1985, Footloose also included a Law rocket launcher, and it was bigger than Bazooka's. Next, let's look at his helmet. The helmet is in a caramel brown plastic. It is a cloth-covered PASGET, or Personal Armor System for Ground Troops helmet. It is the same as version 1, but the version 1 helmet was in green plastic. Finally, we get to the backpack. The backpack is in a dark green, the same green color as the lower half of the figure. It has some pouches and a canteen and a rack with four missiles for the launcher. Those missile tips can break off, so do be careful with those. The version 1 backpack was the same, but it was in an olive drab green color. With the accessories out of the way, let's take a look at the articulation on Bazooka. He had the articulation that was standard for G.I. Joe figures by 1985, but was still the standard by 1988, so he could turn his head from left to right and look up and down. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow, so he could bend his arm at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep, so he could swivel his arm all the way around. This was an O-ring figure, meaning the figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside so he could move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Now let's look at the sculpt design and color on Bazooka, starting with his head. And on his head, he has black hair and a black mustache. This is very similar to the version 1 head. The paint mask on the hair might be slightly different, but they are otherwise identical. At least they didn't change his hair color like they did on Tiger Force Duke. I think he looks like 80s era Freddie Mercury. You can tell me how much you think I'm right in the comments down below. On his chest, he has a white sports jersey with an orange collar. He has an orange number 14 outlined in green on the chest. The numbers are sculpted on. They're not just painted on. There is nothing on the back. It doesn't have the numbers on the back. This is the same chest as version 1, but with updated colors. If they're going to change the colors, I would like to see this in the Patriots Away colors rather than these random Tiger Force colors. Another football-related figure released between these two was William the Refrigerator Perry, a real player in this beautiful number 72 Chicago Bears jersey. 1987 was a popular year for football in G.I. Joe because another football jersey-wearing figure was released that year, Red Dogs from Sergeant Slaughter's Renegades. His arms feature short white sleeves with an orange stripe between two green stripes. His forearms are bare and he has dark green green sweatbands around his wrists, and he has bare hands. Again, these are the same arms as version 1, just in different colors. His waist is dark green with a brown belt with brown pouches on the hips and a detailed belt buckle. He has yellow tiger stripes on the dark green trousers. This is the same waist as version 1, but for once we have more paint on the version 2 figure because the version 2 figure has those yellow tiger stripes. The legs are in 
in dark green with yellow tiger stripes. He has large pockets on each of his thighs. He has brown boots with straps around those boots. These are the same legs as version 1, and again, version 2 has more paint because it has those yellow tiger stripes, but the version 1 colors still look better. We'll look at the classified version of Tiger Force Bazooka right after a word from our sponsor, Yojo Jock Itch Cream. Do you have jock itch? Are you tired of the itching, the burning, the quarter-sized growths on your genitals? Try Yojo Jock Itch Cream for possible relief of all of those symptoms and more. Does it work? It's probably better than nothing. Bam! Yojo Jock Itch. It's Yojo for your little Joe. There is a new version of Tiger Force Bazooka. This is the G.I. Joe Classified Series Target Exclusive Tiger Force David L. Bazooka Cats and Bogan 6-inch action figure. This is an upscaled and updated modern action figure. Unlike the 1988 figure, this classified Tiger Force Bazooka was released before the standard version. Let's get this guy out of the box and compare and contrast with the 1988 original. Here is classified Tiger Force Bazooka out out of the box. I will eventually do a full review on this figure. I won't go into quite that much detail here. I just wanted to get him out and compare and contrast with the original figure that he is trying to mimic. One thing to notice immediately is that the colors are similar to the 1988 figure but updated a bit. Some of the colors are updated in an important way that I will point out. First let's see what they did with the accessories because there's some cool stuff going on here. He has his helmet. This one is in red instead of brown, but it has brown on the inside, and it has some brown straps. It is otherwise very similar to the vintage figure. The missile launcher is proportionally much larger than the vintage one. That's very beefed up, and it looks much better. It's also in green with these gray pads, so it has a paint application on it. It looks really good, much more substantial. It is a little bit difficult to get this grip in the figure's hand. Hand. There's also a foregrip, and that's also a little bit difficult to get in his hand. But there are some posing options with this thing. It also has the strap, like the vintage one. This missile launcher does something that would be difficult to do at the vintage scale. This can be loaded with an anti-tank round. This section in the back is hinged, so it can be swung open, so a round can be loaded in the back. Bazooka does have some anti-tank rockets on his backpack. This backpack is similar to the vintage one in that it does have four rockets for his launcher, but these are removable. These missiles can be loaded in the back of the launcher and that can be closed up and it is ready to fire. It doesn't really fire though. This is not a 90s spring-loaded launcher. There are a couple more features that I will look at when I do a full review of this figure, but I wanted to look at a couple things on the figure itself. First, we get a different type of chest articulation than what we get on most classified figures. He has this cut across the middle of the chest rather than the big hinge that we get on most classified figures. I assume that's so the articulation would not interfere with the 14 on the chest. It still does interfere a bit. Another thing is the Tiger Force colors are a bit more muted than they are on the vintage figure, but some of the colors are updated in a very important way. Instead of the orange and green on the jersey, we have red outlined in blue, and this is an 80s style New England Patriots away jersey. This is perfect for Bazooka. This is what the vintage figure should have been wearing, and I think this is my favorite update for this classified Tiger Force Bazooka. Now let's look at Tiger Force Bazooka's file card. This file card is updated from the version 1 file card, including some significant text updates. His faction is G.I. Joe. There's a portrait of Bazooka here. This is the same artwork as the version 1 card with updated colors. His code name is Bazooka. He is the Tiger Force Missile Specialist. His file name is David L. Katzenbogen. His primary military specialty is Armor Defeating Weapon and systems. Secondary military specialty is Tiger Shark Driver. The secondary military specialty on the first file card was Tank Driver, of course because the Tiger Shark wasn't out in 1985. The Tiger Shark is a Tiger Force vehicle. It's a boat. It's the Tiger Force version of the Cobra Water Moccasin. It's a water vehicle and has nothing to do with tanks or missiles. It doesn't even have missiles on it. The box art for the Tiger Shark does show Bazooka 
driving it. It also shows Spearhead in the gun turret. He was not a Tiger Force character. His birthplace is Hibbing, Minnesota, nowhere near New England, and his grade is E5. This paragraph says, Bazooka was driving an Abrams tank in the 3rd Horde, in parentheses 3rd Armored Division, when he came to the realization that an illiterate farmer armed with a $200 disposable rocket launcher could knock out a million dollar tank with less than two weeks training. Abrams tank refers to the M1 Abrams tank, which began service in 1980 and is still in service today. Third Horde should actually say Third Herd, which is the nickname for the Third Armored Division. With that in mind, he put in for an immediate transfer to Tiger Force. The version 1 file card doesn't mention Tiger Force, of course. It just says he put in for a transfer immediately. I think the idea is that despite being surrounded by an entire tank, he felt vulnerable to relatively inexpensive and unsophisticated anti-tank weapons. The rest of this paragraph is new for the version 2 file card. It does not appear on the version 1 file card at all. It says, since that time, Bazooka has become a true specialist in the use of tactical assault missiles. Now he can fire a surface-to-surface -surface missile at a T-52 tank positioned over two miles away and blow off its gun barrel cleaner than a knife through butter. T-52 tank is probably supposed to refer to the Soviet T-54 or T-55 tank, both of which were in service when this file card was written. This bottom paragraph is new for the version 2 file card. It is not on version 1. It says, Bazooka can tell you everything you need to know about missile attack systems and then some. He'd talk your ear off if he wasn't always on the missile range target shooting. He never lets his missile launcher out of his sight, even in the shower. Even when he goes for a joy ride in the tiger shark through cobra infested waters, he lives by the words, be prepared for anything. That is, anything that can be resolved with a missile. The bazooka we read about on this file card is a pretty smart guy, but in the animated series he is portrayed as something of a dunce. Looking at how bazooka was used in G.I. Joe media, in the animated series he first appeared in Pyramid of Darkness Part 1. Through the series he was partnered with Alpine. They seemed to be buddies. In Pyramid of Darkness Part 4, he and Alpine rescue Quick Kick. They alter bazooka's animation model to give him cold weather gear in the snow, but not quick kicks. He is still shirtless and barefoot. Bazooka also has a strange obsession with the Fudgies candy bar. Fudgies! Say what? Fudgies! You mean the candy bars I was plugging? Uh-huh. Got any? He's probably most remembered for the episode Bazooka Saw a Sea Serpent. It's a strange episode where Bazooka sees an underwater vehicle disguised as a sea serpent, but nobody believes him. Even when there are other witnesses who are attacked by it, nobody believes Bazooka. To be fair, Bazooka is a f***ing moron. If he says good morning, you better check your watch. I don't usually cover post-vintage series, but Bazooka was also known for dying in the first part of G.I. Joe Resolute. In the comic book series published by Marvel Comics, Bazooka had a handful of appearances. He first appeared in issue number 44. In that issue, some of the new Joes are testing out new vehicles when they get caught up in a demonstration of Dr. Mindbender's new inventions. References say his final appearance was in issue number 100, but I I've gone through that issue and I don't see him. He was in issue number 90. It wasn't a big appearance, but he was there. He was never a major character in the comic book. Bazooka's portrayal in the animated series may have been silly and dumb, but at least the character was entertaining. He was mostly a non-factor in the comic book. He barely appears and does almost nothing. Looking at Tiger Force Bazooka overall, this is a middle-of-the-road figure. It's one of the better Tiger Force figures. Bazooka is a popular character, so it's nice to have a new version of him. This one has mostly the same strengths and weaknesses as the first version. As a kid, Bazooka was a frustrating figure for me. He was half of a military-looking figure. He was like Chuckles from 1987. The lower half of the figure looked pretty cool, but the top half was brightly colored. As an adult collector, I have a lot more appreciation for Bazooka. Now I understand the reference for the jersey. Ron 
Rudad is a New England Patriots fan, as am I, and I love the nod to the history of the team. The Tiger Force version loses that reference. The jersey colors are changed, so it's no longer a Pats jersey. In terms of camouflage, it's no worse than a bright red shirt. At least the first version had the virtue of the connection to the creator's favorite team. The best thing about the classified version is it fixes the jersey colors and now represents the same team as the first version. Tiger Force Bazooka has one thing the first version doesn't have, painted camouflage. It has painted tiger stripes on the lower half of the figure. That is something special about Tiger Force figures. They didn't just change the colors, they added the tiger aesthetic. Unfortunately, the tiger stripes are yellow, so that negates the cool factor. If Bazooka version 1 didn't exist, I would say Tiger Force Bazooka is a totally fine average figure. When I compare it to version 1, though, I like the first version a lot better. Of course I would prefer a military looking figure, but if it's going to have bright colors, I prefer the red, white, and blue. That was my review of Tiger Force Bazooka. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope everyone enjoys the big game. I'm picking the Chiefs by four points. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and share this video with your friends. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. Let's not forget the real sponsors of the show, the supporters on Patreon. They're the ones who help make these videos possible. I could not do it without them. You see their names scrolling on the screen right now. If you'd like your name to be there, please support the channel on Patreon. That's all for now. I'll be back soon with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Frozen fudgies, what a treat. Lots of chocolate, really sweet. Full of taffy, raisin, and nuts. They'll melt in your mouth and turn to lead in your gut. Fudgies, they look the same going out as they do going in. Mmm, gross.